Hey guys, Level Cap here, and welcome back to Loadout, the series where you get to pick which weapon I play with. Today, we're bringing back some Modern Warfare 2 nostalgia with a special Enemy of My Enemy Loadout. This was one of the top rated suggestions on my last Loadout video, so be sure to leave your ideas for a chance to see it in next week's episode. Now, at first glance, this Loadout seems like a dream come true. Kyle's Loadout suggestion is ripped straight from the classic Modern Warfare 2 single player mission, Enemy of My Enemy. This is the Loadout Soap uses to fight his way through a free for all of enemies while trying to intercept Nikolai's plane. It's a fast-paced and crazy set-piece sequence that really epitomized the organized chaos that Call of Duty is synonymous with. Soap's loadout in the mission is also pretty interesting. He's equipped with a marksman rifle and the reliable MP5. However, translating this loadout to modern warfare is where things start to go off the rails a little bit. The EBR-14 is a solid marksman rifle that does decent damage, has pretty controllable recoil, and okay range. The MP5 is one of the best guns in the game. It does massive damage in close quarters and is viable even out to the range assault rifles excel at. It's a versatile jack of all trades weapon that's pretty much everyone's go-to SMG in standard multiplayer. Kyle's comment says to use the EBR-14 with a monolithic suppressor, sniper scope, FSS Raider chassis elite stock, 20 round magazine, and the focus perk. As for the MP5, he says to use the monolithic suppressor, the FFS mini barrel, solo zero optics, mini reflex, FTAC collapsible stock, and ranger foregrip. As for perks, we've got cold-blooded overkill and amped. Finally, we have a frag and flash grenade. Now, the first thing I did was hop into a ground war match to test things out. I was lucky and got Zokov Boneyard for my first match. I haven't looked into how much of a replica of Modern Warfare 2's original mission Boneyard is, but it's got a lot of the same basic features. Right off the bat, the EBR-14 worked well as a counter sniper weapon. People love camping with their tricked out HDRs in Ground War, and it can honestly be kind of obnoxious to play the mode because it doesn't incentivize attacking enemy objectives much. So dealing with tons of snipers sitting at the edge of the map is pretty common. The EBR worked okay against these players. I'd rather have a proper sniper rifle, of course, but having a weapon that can reliably kill someone in two to three hits at range is still nice. The big problem though is the lack of any recoil controlling attachments. In this configuration, the EBR kicks like crazy and it's tough to land those quick two tap shots that are pretty essential for making this weapon work. The sniper scope also makes it difficult to track targets in medium range. And really that's where you could kind of perfect this loadout. With a 3.4 times or red dot sight, the EBR would really shine as a medium range assault rifle. You wouldn't have the stopping power to outclass the M4, but you'd still have a good chance of doing well in a typical match. As for the MP5, who doesn't love a good MP5 build? I usually run mine with the 10 millimeter ammo conversion and max my sprint out with the five milliwatt laser and stippled grip tape. That combo in conjunction with a weapon sight or barrel will mow down pretty much anyone no problem. Infinity Ward have done a lot, especially in Warzone, to push other players to the forefront of the meta. The AUG with its ammo conversion, the Growl, and a few other weapons have become the dominant choices people go with. The MP7 has also become a top tier pick because of its massive extended mag options. But the good old MP5 is still as reliable as ever. In standard multiplayer, Kyle's loadout worked fine. I definitely missed the ammo conversion and the five milliwatt laser, but even without them, I had no trouble going toe to toe with pretty much anyone. Aside from adding that five milliwatt laser, the biggest thing I'd change about this setup is the monolithic suppressor. In general, suppressors don't do a whole lot for you. They certainly help you stay off the minimap and can make it slightly harder to pick your shots out of the chaotic movements, but overall, you've given up an attachment slot for something that benefits you more passively than actively. Generally speaking, I like picking attachments that help me when I'm in a gunfight, not necessarily ones that help me avoid the enemies. That's why you'll see me run with laser sights and without suppressors so often in modern warfare. I'm okay with giving away my position if it means my weapon is more competitive than whoever spots me. In a pinch, super accurate hip fire will save you. Even if the enemy knows you're coming, you can still react faster and kill them from the hip with the right attachments. As for how these two weapons pair together, I think it's an okay combination. 
I mainly used the MP5 because of its high damage up close. Most of the matches I played were spent getting close to enemies and hip firing them down. The few engagements I got into where the MP5's range just wasn't enough, I swapped to the EBR-14 and got a quick cleanup kill. If you manage to do a bit of damage with another weapon first, the EBR is a perfect quick swap kill weapon. Again though, I found the sniper scope and lack of recoil control attachments to be the biggest problem with this loadout. The EBR is meant to be a low recoil, long range rifle, so foregoing attachments that make it excel in this regard is a huge handicap. It can still be effective, but you'd be better off with more general purpose weapons like the Grout. Now where things got really dicey for me is in Warzone. I think part of the issue is that Infinity Ward replaced Solo's mode with the Stimulus mode. This lets you spawn as long as you have 4,000 500 and basically means you're continually getting dropped on by people. The rooftops and elevated positions on the Warzone map just mean the mode is a rooftop camper's paradise. It also means people play incredibly passive. A bunch of my deaths were just the people who found a nice dark corner to sit in and hadn't moved in ages. The RPG spam has also gotten pretty frustrating lately. Considering the theme of this loadout is a mission where everyone is trying to kill you as you escape the area, I thought Warzone was going to be the perfect fit. I did manage to get some pretty slick kills and stay alive late into matches. The issue was when somebody I just killed would respawn above me, grab the M4 off the ground, and absolutely slap me around with it. The EBR and MP5 setup how they are in this loadout just can't compete in the Warzone meta. Even in solos, you need a laser accurate automatic weapon with a big magazine. Even hitting shots at the EBR's effective range was tough enough, let alone downing somebody with it. Possibly if the solos mode didn't have respawns enabled, it would have turned out differently. Warzone is tough to win in general, so being at such an extreme disadvantage to everyone rocking assault rifles was kind of a nightmare. That said, the MP5 still came in clutch and I even got some pretty fun respawn kills that I had no right to get. It was frustrating knowing I could have won more gunfights with better gear, but I still had a good time overall. Of course, where this class shines the most was free for all. I wanted to pull through a win playing a mode that lived up to the enemy of my enemy mission. Aside from Warzone, free for all seemed like the most fitting. The thing that stood out the most for me in free for all was just how powerful Ghost was with this loadout. Not having it was like having a target painted on my back and everyone felt like they were looking at me through walls. I'd get my personal UAV only for basically nothing to show up on my minimap. I ended up relying on other players to make noise or move out of cover. It was actually pretty fun hunting other players down. I don't usually play a lot of free for all. Personally, I prefer objective oriented modes because they offer some teamwork and tactics other than just kill or be killed, but I certainly was on a roll this match and I had a good time. I ended up going with a classic UAV Predator Missile and Harrier kill streak letter to bring back those Modern Warfare 2 vibes. Being able to spot where the enemies were with the Predator Missile and move to their location was also great. The Harrier also did a great job of spotting and killing camping enemies at the edges of the map. Things got a little hairy towards the end as everyone picked up the pace and was trying to catch up to me, but in the end, I did pull out on top with a pretty commanding victory. Overall, I'd say the enemy of my enemy loadout is the one that has the markings of a great class but doesn't quite live up to the potential of either weapon. It's a nice throwback to Modern Warfare 2 days, and I kind of hope Infinity Ward adds classic weapon sounds in with the cosmetic items or something like that. The sound of the suppressed marksman rifles in Modern Warfare 2 is super iconic and I did miss hearing it with this class. If I had to make a big change to this Leta, it would definitely be in the recoil attachments for the EBR. That and a more mid-range optic. The MP5 could do with the ammo conversion and a 5 milliwatt laser, but both weapons are pretty viable in general. They just need the right attachments. Anyway guys, that's it for this episode of Loadout. If you guys are digging the series, be sure to subscribe, turn on notifications so you don't miss the next week's episode. Leave your Loadout suggestions in the comment down below, and I'll pick one of the top rated ones for next week. As always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. This is Level Cap signing off.
Well done. 